Most of the time, when you're working on a project in the office, you're going to have some information from other design consultants to get you started on your building model. Often, this will come from the architect in the form of rough plans, sections, and maybe even the start of a Revit model. The first thing we want to do when working with Revit models we receive from other disciplines is to work out what information in those models we want to use. Most of the time, the architect is responsible for locating the building in the real world. In the same way that we can have coordinates and origins in CAD files, we can locate our Revit projects using real world coordinates. The architect might also have set up grids and levels which we'll want to look at, as well as defining the positions of walls, stairs and other crucial items. They may well also have modelled things that we don't really need to see, like furniture and internal layouts. But at an early stage in the project, it's useful to see this information, as things such as internal partitions may be useful to us when trying to place structural walls and columns. In a stadium, the thing that the architect is likely to have at the top of his priority list is what they call sight lines. Sight lines are essentially how well you can see the pitch from each seat in the stadium. This has an important effect on the experience you have when you visit the stadium, and is also something that the client will be very concerned about, since seats with a bad view of the action aren't as valuable as those with a great view. So we need to be mindful of these things as we move forward. The first thing I want to do is locate the project in the real world. We have an outline architectural model which already has this information defined for us. Revit has two coordinate systems that we need to understand, and each one has its own base point. Firstly, we have the survey base point. The survey base point represents a known position in the real world, such as a geodetic survey marker. The survey point is defined using a north-south and east-west position on plan, as well as an elevation. These will be displayed in the units of your project. This project is in millimetres, so the values given are also in millimetres. The other base point we have is the project base point. This defines the origin of our project coordinate system and is typically placed somewhere relevant to the project so that all of the project dimensions can be taken from this common project base point. You might have noticed that our project base point also has an angle to true north. We can use this to define our project north relative to true north and make sure that our building sits squarely on the page. The survey point and project base point have already been set up by the architect in the architectural Revit model. To make sure that everything ends up in exactly the same place, we aren't going to repeat this process. Instead, we're going to acquire the project coordinates from the architectural Revit model. This is the process of using shared coordinates. In general, it's good practice to ensure that one file is used as the basis of all of the others. We can do this by acquiring the shared coordinates from the architectural model. Which project is used as a basis for the shared coordinate system is going to vary from project to project, but it's likely to be either the architectural model or a site plan of some sort. The first thing we need to do is link the architectural model. I'm in the file that we created in the previous exercise. It's an empty project file made from our structural template file and just has the project information set up in it. I'm in the level one work in progress plan view. If ever I want to load something into my Revit file, I need to go to the insert tab. The first button is Link Revit, and I can navigate to where the architectural model is saved on my computer. There are a few options at the bottom with regards to the positioning of our model, but we haven't set up the shared coordinates yet, so we're going to just use origin to origin. If we were linking a file where we had already set up the shared coordinate system, we could choose the by shared coordinates option, and this would correctly place our projects relative to each other. But we haven't set this up yet, so we're just going to choose origin to origin. Now you have the architectural model loaded in, you should see the architectural model on the screen. And you can tell that they aren't native elements to your own Revit model, as when you hover over them, you can't select them individually. You can only select the Revit link as a whole. If you can't select the Revit link, it's probably because selecting links is disabled in Revit. Check that there are no X's over the Select Links button in the bottom right hand corner of the window. All Revit project files have a survey base point and a project base point, but you might not necessarily be able to see them in your view. This is most likely because they are hidden in the view. If you select the light bulb from the view control bar at the bottom of the screen, Revit will reveal the hidden elements. You also get a magenta border around the workspace, showing that you're in the reveal hidden elements mode. So now I can see my project base point and my survey point. And they're right on top of each other and they're both set to zero. I'm going to stay in this mode while I acquire the shared coordinates from the architectural model so we can see what effect this has. If you go to the Manage tab, you'll see that we've got a panel dedicated to the position of our project. Click on the Coordinates drop-down and you'll see you have the option to Acquire Coordinates. If you now take a look at the status bar, Revit's telling you what to do next. It says Select a Link Project from which to acquire Shared Coordinate System. If I click on the linked architectural file, the shared coordinates will be acquired. You can now see that the survey base point seems to have disappeared. 
The project base point hasn't moved, but if I select it, it's not set to zero anymore. I have a north-south position and an east-west position, as well as an elevation and an angle to true north. These are the coordinates of this point in the shared coordinate system that's been acquired from the architectural model. The project base point will be the origin for all of the coordinates in the structural model, so I can choose to put this somewhere useful. In order to move the project base point, I must first unclip it by clicking on the paperclip symbol next to it. If I then select the project base point and choose the move tool from the modify toolbar, I can then click to enter a move start point and click again to enter the move end point. And I'm going to locate my project base point on the bottom left hand corner of the grid. Once I've finished moving the project base point, I'll click on the paperclip symbol again to clip it in place. This just makes sure that we can't move it accidentally. Now I'll make sure I have nothing selected by pressing escape a couple of times, and if I right click on the workspace, I can choose zoom to fit. This shows me that the survey base point is way down off the bottom of the page, and if I click on it, he's still at zero. This is the position of the origin of my survey data. I'm happy to leave this here for now, so I'll deselect everything by pressing escape a couple of times. Then I'm going to get out of the reveal hidden elements mode by clicking on the light bulb in the view control bar again, and now the base points are hidden. And if I right click and choose zoom to fit again, I'm going to fit my project nicely on the screen. You can also do this by double clicking the middle mouse button.